Gunpowder? They've completely blindsided us. 
It appears that everything else they've done today was to serve as a decoy, even making the tanks go haywire. Right. It looks like their real target was the railway guns all along. Which means they must be serious about targeting that trade conference in Crossbell City. It wouldn't! How oh, can they possibly sink? So, they're intent on taking the Chancellor's head after all. Resorting to such wanton violence? This is absolutely outrageous. Please, let us help. We don't know if reinforcements are on the way, and it doesn't look like we have much time left. We have to stop them before they can activate the railway guns. Green's right. I don't know how much we can really do, but considering the alternative, we have to try. But we're about to let those terrorists have their way. <sighs> Looks like any attempt to convince you otherwise would fall on deaf ears. All right. Green, you and the rest of Group A are with me. Group B, you'll be under the command of Major Nightheart. One group will secure the gun in the right wing. The other group will secure the left. This is an actual combat situation, with real lives at stake. I expect the best from each of you. Yes, sir! All right, Class 7. Our objective is to stop the activation of the railway guns. We've learned a lot at the Academy. It's time to put that knowledge to the test. What? What? during our field study. Mechanical monstrosities. Save the talking for later. We need to take these things out. Got it! Very well, I will serve as your opponent. My turn! <laughs> My turn! I'll handle this.
my turn. My turn. Very well. Those things were the same as the one we fought outside the Gram. It seems a large number of them are on the loose inside the fortress. I'm guessing that's what got the soldiers we just saw, too. Seems so. So these are archaisms. Are you certain, Instructor? Yeah, they're a kind of autonomous weapon made by a rather... unsavory group. And a real pain to deal with, too. We need to hurry, but keep your wits about you. Understood. Right. serve as your opponent. Leave it to me! My duty as a noble. Ah! 
very well. I will serve as your opponent. Here we go. I'll handle this. My turn. It's my turn. My turn. Okay. I've got this. stayed on the other side. There! Those are... The railway guns. They're enormous. Damn! How did they manage to get them prepped so fast? Don't tell me they're just gonna let him rip without even setting a target! Instructor! Well, they're certainly not shy about bringing out the big guns. Ugh! We don't have time for this! We need to take these things out fast! Right there with you! Let's send these Cretans to the scrappy! Very well, I will serve as your opponent. My turn! I'll handle this. Now! Okay! Okay! It's my turn! Go! Go! And one for me! Very well. I'll handle the Okay. I'll handle this. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sorry, everyone. I won't lose like this. Is it looking good? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, everyone. My turn. Leave it to me. Thanks! 
my turn. this. sure it's safe to <gasps> railway guns no 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 don't
The Ministry of Railways wishes to thank all passengers for their patronage. This train is bound for Bereahard via Keldic. The next stop is Trista. Trista. We will be stopped at Trista for one minute. When disembarking, please ensure no belongings are left behind. Almost there. Man, spring's really in full bloom here, huh? Back home, there was still so much snow on the ground, I hardly even realized it. Never seen so many all blossoming at once. I'll be spending the next two years here. Wonder how long it'll be before I think of it as home. But yeah, I think I'm going to like it. <gasps> Ouch! Whoa, sorry about that. Are you okay? I should have picked a better place to take in the scenery. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I should have been paying more attention to where I was going instead of gawking at the flowers. It's really a pretty town though, isn't it? Just like a postcard. Yeah, I guess that's the magic of springtime for you. I hope everything in your case is okay. Oh, don't worry about that. It'll be fine. Hey, you've got the red uniform too, huh? Yeah, but now that you mention it, almost everyone else on the train had a green jacket. You're one of the few I've seen in red. I didn't really think about it until now. I just put on the uniform they sent me. I hadn't given it much thought until I got here either. But yeah, like you said, there have been a few others sporting them too, so I doubt it's a mistake. Maybe it means we'll end up being classmates. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I should get going. I've got a feeling we'll see each other again at the entrance ceremony, though. I totally forgot to ask her name. Oh well, I'm sure we'll run into each other later. She's right, though. It is weird that there are so few of us in red. Are there even enough to make a class? That boardman they sent with the uniform is pretty strange, too. It sure looks a lot fancier than your standard issue ornament, that's for sure. Eh, guess there's no point in racking my brain over it. Someone will probably explain it during orientation. Thor's military academy is on the north side of town. I've still got some time to look around before the entrance ceremony, but it'd be pretty awkward to be late the first day.
I shall take my leave here, my lady. I pray you find victory here in both your studies and your training. Thank you, Klaus. I'm leaving everything in your hands while Father is away. Understood, my lady. Please excuse my rudeness, young sir. It truly is a splendid day, is it not? The start of a new chapter in the lives of so many promising youths. Allow me to express my sincerest congratulations on your admittance into this fine academic institution. Oh. Thank you very much. I'm guessing he's a butler? He certainly looks the part. That means the girl with him must have been a noble. She did have a certain dignity about her. I wonder if she's from a famous military family or something. So this is it. Thor's Military Academy. Founded by the legendary Emperor Dreykels himself. Thank you for your patience, sir. We've arrived at the Academy. Much obliged. Please, if you'll allow me to take your luggage. That won't be necessary. I prefer to avoid standing out too much. But, sir... This isn't open for debate. Take whatever rest you need, then return to Bereahard. As you wish, I shall be departing, sir. May your time spent in these hallowed halls be all you've hoped for. Please take care. Limousine, and one of Reinford's fanciest models, too. Looks like even Erebonia's upper crust send their children here. Welcome to Thor's Military Academy. You're... let's see. Yes, you're the last of them. Green Schwarzer, right? Uh, yes, that's me. It's a pleasure to meet you. But how do you know me? <laughs> it's a long story. Don't sweat the details right now. Is that your weapon you've got wrapped up? I'll need to hold on to that for the time being. Oh, right. It mentioned something about that in the guidebook. Thanks. We should be able to return it to you before long. You'll hardly even miss it. The entrance ceremony is going to be held in the auditorium. Just head straight back. You can't miss it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your first day at Thor's. We're glad to have you. I hope these next two years will be a fruitful time for you. I guess those two must be second years? That girl definitely looked younger than me, though. What was that about me being the last? 
I'm not seriously the very last stupid to check in, am I? Sounds like it's about time for the ceremony to start, though. Well, here's to the start of a great two years. Now, if I may, I'd like to say a few words in closing about this Academy's illustrious history. Thor's Military Academy was founded almost 220 years ago. Its founder, as I'm sure you're all aware, was none other than the great Emperor Dracos. The very same Emperor who ended the War of the Lions and returned prosperity to the Erebonian Empire. Thirty years after becoming Emperor, in the later years of his life, he opened the doors of this institution. It was to be a place where young people like yourselves could learn the art of war. But with the mechanization of the military, many of our graduates now pursue careers outside the army. Our mission, however, remains the same. To prepare our students to fulfill Emperor Dreykel's famous mandate. Arise, O oh youth, and become the foundation of the world. Though much has happened these past two and a quarter centuries, the world is still the domain of the young. Yet still the question remains, what qualities must one possess to become a part of its foundation? I hope this credo will serve as a guide and an inspiration to you during your two years at this academy. Go forth, my students. The world awaits the great things you will one day accomplish. The foundation of the world, huh? <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> no kidding. Though, this is Dreykel's the Lionheart we're talking about. He didn't earn his nickname by taking the easy road. Guess we've got more to worry about than just passing exams, huh? <laughs> I guess we do. I'm Elliot Craig. Nice to meet you. Reen Schwarzer. Hey, looks like we're sporting the same school fashion. Yeah, no idea what the red uniform is supposed to mean, though. Most of the other students are wearing green. Well, except for the ones in the white uniforms. Those must be the nobles. Looks that way. Though... Hmm? Something wrong? Nah. Just thinking to myself. And that brings us to the close of Thor's 215th entrance ceremony. Next, please proceed to the class designated in your guidebook. There, you will go over the school rules as well as your class's curriculum. That is all. Dismissed! The class designated in our guidebook? I don't remember seeing anything like that. There wasn't any information on that in mine, either. I just assumed they'd tell us where to go after the ceremony. All right! Students in red uniforms, if I can have your attention, please. By now, you're probably all confused. Where's my class assignment, you're probably thinking? That's perfectly understandable. Your situation is a little more complicated than the other students. But before I explain, I'd like all of you to join me for a special orienteering exercise. What? Did you mean an orientation exercise? Hmm. Worry not. Everything will be made clear soon enough. Now, right this way if you would. Looks like we're gonna have to follow her if we want any answers. <sighs> what do you think this is all about? 
I have no idea, but we're not going to accomplish anything just standing around here. We should go with her. Hmm? This place. Why is there a building this dilapidated on campus? It looks like it should have been torn down ages ago. <laughs> what does she even want us to do here? Uh, is she ever going to tell us what's going on? I suppose we'll just have to go inside and see for ourselves what awaits us. Th this place looks like some old haunted mansion or something. Now that you mention it, it kind of does. I think this is everyone I've seen with a red uniform so far. I guess we really are part of the same class then. So, these are our new underclassmen, huh? Yep. They've got a different set of hoops to jump through than we did, though. I'm just happy all our work's paying off. I'd hate to have put in a year's worth of effort for nothing. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Wait, when did you do any work? You were just slacking off the whole time. Says the master slacker. Still, looks like Elisa's got some stiff competition. Quite a bevy of beauties they've got there. And I'm looking forward to getting intimately acquainted with each and every one of them. Oh, you know one of them? Er, wait. No, no, not these ones too. Stop flirting with every damn girl you lay eyes on. Do you have any idea how many guys at this school have gotten their hearts broken because of your libido? Uh <laughs> did, did you just sneer at me? Oh, you did, didn't you? Come on now, no fighting, you two. Well, look who finally made it. Nice work. You got our little chickadees all sorted out, I take it? Yep, they're all bright-eyed and ready to go. So from here on out, we're going to have to give it all we've got to support this fledgling class. <laughs> now you sound the part of the student council president. Guess she's going all in. Well, they'd be in for a pretty rough time if we didn't help out a little. At least to start with, anyway. Everything's ready over there, right? You betcha. Just like the instructor asked. Can't help but feel a little sorry for them, though. Same here. They've got no idea what they're being tossed into. The class they've been picked for didn't even exist before this year. Guess all we can do is watch and see what they're made of, right? The name's Sarah Valestine. I'm the instructor in charge of Class 7, which means you get the pleasure of seeing me all year. Glad to finally meet you. Wait, Class 7? Uh, us? I'm not sure I understand. I wasn't told anything about this at enrollment. Excuse me, Instructor Sarah? I was under the impression that there were only five classes at this academy, and that students were split among them based on their social class and home region. Right you are, Miss Top Scorer on the Thor's entrance exam. Students in each year are divided into five classes, two for the nobility and three for commoners. And it's been that way for ages, right up through last year. But this year, we decided to shake things up a little. Wh what do you... 
we now have a sixth class. Fittingly titled, Class 7. And in Class 7, we recognize no distinction between nobles and commoners. Wait, you just jumped straight from 5 to 7? Y you're really putting nobles and commoners in the same class? <laughs> this must be some kind of joke! And why is this the first I've heard of it? Well, uh... Um... Who are you again? Machias Regnitz. And with all due respect, Instructor, it's ludicrous to intermix nobles and commoners like this! Must I be forced to spend my next two years shoulder to shoulder with those arrogant, stuck-up hedonists? Uh, you do know I'm not the one who made the decision, right? Besides, what's the big deal anyway? You're all kids. Can't you all just get along or something? Just, just get along? <laughs> and how would you propose we do that? <laughs> and what's your problem? Oh, nothing much. I just find the irony of your behavior rather humorous. Is that so? It seems the scion of some noble house has left the comfort of his mansion to grace the unwashed masses with his wisdom. Please, my lord, do share your esteemed name with us so I can give you all the respect you deserve. Eusus Alborea. Not that I'd expect the name of an arrogant, stuck-up hedonist to lodge itself in that hard head of yours. He's from one of the four great houses! The son of Duke Alborea, Lord of the Kreutzen province in the southeast. Well, you don't get much more noble than that. Interesting. I'd heard the rumors. <sighs> Did, do you expect me to be impressed? Your family lineage means nothing to me! I'll never bend my knee to the likes of... Okay, okay, that's enough. I'm sure a couple of you have a few grievances, but now's not the time. I'll hear your complaints later. Right now, you've got your orienteering exercise, and far be it for me to keep you from our fun little icebreaker. <sighs> you mentioned this orienteering exercise earlier? What exactly does that involve? It's a form of outdoor competition, isn't it? Something like a cross between a map reading exercise and a scavenger hunt? <sighs> Is that why they asked us to hand over our weapons at the gate? Nothing gets by you, does it? spoil the fun, so let's get started, shall we? What? <gasps> oh. What? Ah! <sighs> ah! <sighs> <sighs> Come on, Fee. No cheating. You're going with them and that's that. What's the point in having an icebreaker if you don't make a couple of new friends? Ugh, lame. Ugh, what just happened? The floor gave out from under us. I can't believe I fell for such an obvious trap. Does this mean there's a series of catacombs beneath the school grounds then? What does that woman think she's playing at? <sighs> I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest. Hey, Reen, are you... Okay... Easy now. Hands where she can see them. Oh, what happened? Huh? <laughs> um, 
Well, this is a bit awkward. I'm really sorry about that. Still, I'm just glad you're okay. That's what's really important here, right? Ah! Wow, it's just not your day, is it? Well, now that I've hit the bottom, things can only improve. I hope. What is this place anyway? I was wondering the same thing. We should check out those tables. What? Huh? Is this... from the devices we received with the Academy Guidebook. Seems to be some sort of portable orbment. Right you are. These handy little devices are a special kind of battle orbment. Is that Miss Valestine? So these devices have built-in communications functionality then? Wait, don't tell me these things are... New model battle orbments made through a partnership between the Epstein Foundation and Reinford Company. Newly made fifth generation battle ornaments, in fact. They're called Arcus units. Arcus. So these are battle ornaments. That means they'll allow us to use arts, right? Sure will. Just set a quartz into one of its slots and you can use arts all the live long day. Which is why I've prepared enough quartz for each and every one of you. The weapons you brought are all here too, each packaged neatly along a little box containing the quartz. Find yours, and try setting the quartz into your Arcus. Hmm, I suppose it can't hurt to try. <sighs> what is this woman thinking? Let's see, mine is... that one. Oh, I see mine over there. Let me just go grab it, okay? the large slot in the center of your Arcus, you'll be able to use arts. Go on, give it a try.
moves that you've successfully synchronized with your Argus. Congratulations! Now you can use Arts as much as you want. These Argus units have plenty more nifty features, but I wouldn't want to bombard you with too much info all at once, so we'll cover those another time. Anyway, since you've got your Arcus all set up and ready to go, here's what I want you to do. When you step through that door, you'll be in an underground testing area. Basically, it's a dungeon. It's pretty large and full of twists and turns. I'd almost guarantee you'll get lost at least once. But when you find the exit, you'll be able to return to the first floor of this old schoolhouse. There are monsters wandering around though, so don't let your guard down even for a moment. With all that said, let's commence our special orienteering exercise. Your objective is to make your way through this area and back to the surface. Make it back in one piece and I'll be happy to field any complaints you might have. If you make it back safely, I might even give you a kiss. Free of charge. On the cheek, of course. Um, I don't think she's joking. <laughs> and just where do you think you're going? Were you planning to wander off on your own without saying anything? I have no interest in becoming friends with anyone here. And I'm surprised that you, of all people, give a damn what I do. Unless you've suddenly decided you do want to keep company with one of those stuck-up hedonists, after all. Still, if you're afraid of the monsters, I suppose I could accompany you. After all, what kind of Erebonian noble would I be if I didn't have at least some degree of prowess with a sword? And noblesse oblige dictates that it's my sacred duty to protect powerless commoners such as yourself. What? What the hell? Nobody's asking your High Excellency to deign to help us! That's how you're gonna be. I'll just find my way out of here before you. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself without some relic of an outdated class is still dragging me down. <laughs> um, uh, what should we do? The only thing we can do. We should begin exploring these ruins ourselves. I believe it would be prudent to remain in small groups, however. Would the two of you have any objections to accompanying me? Oh, no, that's fine. It would be a huge help, actually. And you're welcome to join us as... Well, I suppose that's a no. Perhaps we'll run into her along the way, and she can join us then. So, shall we be off? I'm certain you gentlemen will be fine, but do take care. Okay. If you'll excuse us, please. Huh. <sighs> <sighs> Nah, it's such a hot first impression there, huh? You can say that again. I'll have to clear things up with her later. Anyway, how do you guys want to do this? Should the three of us stick together too? Sounds good to me. I'd get pretty anxious wandering around a place like this alone. No objections here. I'd be happy to accompany you. I don't believe I've introduced myself yet. My name is Gaius Warzel. I just arrived in the Empire, so any help you can offer would be much appreciated. Oh, so you're from abroad? <laughs> I've been wondering. My name is Reen Schwarzer. It's nice to meet you. I'm Elliot Craig. So, you fight with that? Of course. Why else would I be carrying it? It's a spear, but it has that odd cross-shaped head. It looks kind of... awesome. Think of it as combining the best parts of a spear and a poleaxe. That was pretty handy with it back home. 
But speaking of weapons, I have to say, yours looks pretty unique. Oh, this thing. Is it a staff? Wait, no, it's an ornament, isn't it? Both, actually. It's an orbal staff. The tech is pretty recent. This one's still a prototype, more or less. Back during enrollment, they told me I had some aptitude for it, so when it came time to choose, I just sort of ran with it. Interesting. I've never seen anything like it before. Can't say I have, either. They're still in development, apparently, so there aren't too many around just yet. But that said, I'm curious about what you've got there, Reen. Oh, my sword? Yeah, but what kind of sword is it? It's different from the kinds of swords I thought the people in the Empire used, though. It's an Eastern style of saber called Itachi. Any way you slice it, though, it's basically a longsword. Wow, that's one beautiful blade. The craftsmanship looks exceptional. They're renowned for the layering of their steel and the sharpness of their edge. Truth be told, though, I'm still a little hesitant to be swinging around something this dangerous. Seriously? If that's what hesitant looks like, I'll bet confidence will make you unstoppable. Well, you sound like a good guy to have around when the going gets tough. Speaking of which, I think we've been standing around long enough. We should really be getting ourselves into trouble. I think I can manage that. You saw it yourselves. Trouble has a way of dropping in on me. Let's take it slow and steady, though. We need to adapt to each other's fighting styles to really gel as a team. Got it. Monster! Huh, never seen this kind before. Looks like a flying feline. Careful, everyone. They're going to be behind us. Let's go! There aren't more of those things lurking around here. I hate to tell you, but I can sense more further in. Anyway, let's just stay alert.
seems to be a treasure chest here. Make sure we're not going in circles.
my turn. Leave it to me. Marcus, activate. Ha! My turn! My turn! Arc, leave it to me. Leave it to me. Go! Go! All right! My turn! All right, let's... <sighs> Elliot, are you okay? I don't see any obvious injuries. I, I'm okay. I was just so relieved the fight was over, the strength kind of just left my legs. I'm amazed how calm you two are. You don't seem tired or worried or anything. I guess I'm just used to fighting monsters like these. You need a hand? N no, I'll be fine. It was just a momentary lapse on my part. I can get up, and there we go. Look out! Elliot! Huh? Looks like I made it just in time. Thank Adios for that. Oh, it's you! You said your name was Machias, right? That's right. I came to realize that I shouldn't have just stormed off like I did. Let that arrogant noble goad me into losing my composure, acting on impulse. So I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I acted foolishly and I hope you can forgive me for it. A sweat. Water under the bridge. Yeah, we all have moments when we say or do things we regret. That's human nature for you. Oh, and thanks for saving me, by the way. I'm just glad I happened to be passing by. After I'd cooled my head, I decided to retrace my steps and... Were. Is it just the three of you here? Yeah, we stood around talking for a while, so the others are probably ahead of us at this point. I don't think there's any reason to go back any farther. I can't imagine you'll find anyone there. I see. Uh, I... I don't suppose you'd mind if I came with you, would you? I'm reasonably skilled with a gun, so you might find it useful having me along. Sure thing. Welcome aboard. The name's Rain Schwarzer. I'm Elliot Craig. It's nice to meet you. My name is Guy Schwarzel. It's a pleasure. 
The pleasure's mine, I assure you. My name is Machias Regnitz. Could... Could I ask you what social class you each belong to? I realize how that must sound, uh, considering my recent outburst. But please, don't take it personally. I'm simply curious to know who I'm associating with. Um, well, both my parents are commoners. Likewise. Though my homeland has no class system to begin with. Ah, so you're from abroad then? What about you, Reen? Well... Let's just say I haven't got a drop of noble blood in my veins. So I guess we're all on equal standing here. Well, now that's a relief. We should probably get moving then. Somewhat concerned about the girls, as you might imagine. I'd feel much better if we were around to help if they wound up in danger. Yeah, I suppose there's strength in numbers. All right, let's go. What's a place like this even doing on the school grounds? Yeah, who puts a giant trap door in a campus building?
Leave it to me. It's my turn. Here we go. My turn. Leave it to me. Just getting started. Leave it to me. Right. Leave it to me. Go. All right. My turn. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. My turn! It's my turn! Here we go! Leave it to me. Run! Now's our chance! We can do this! My turn! It's my turn. Leave it to me. My turn. It's my turn. My turn. It's my turn. You're on. Leave it to me. My turn! Right! Go! All right! It's my turn! Get we meet again. <sighs> Good to see you guys are hanging in there. I'm glad the four of you are unharmed as well. 
Well, it seems you've cooled your head a bit, at least. <sighs> yes, I've calmed down now. At any rate, I don't believe I've introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Laura S. Arce, from the town of Legrand. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Huh. Legrand? That's down on the southeastern outskirts of the Empire, isn't it? Correct. It's an old castle town on the shores of Lake Apple. We're connected to the rest of the country by train. But other than that, it's a fairly remote region. Hmm. That name sounds so familiar. Wait, so your father would be... Yes, my father is Viscount Arsade, Lord of Legram. Do you take issue with that? No, not at all. <laughs> Machias, was it? I can only speak for myself, but I don't feel I've ever done anything to bring shame upon myself in Adios's eyes. And I fully believe the same to be true of my father. Please, I meant no offense. I'm sorry if... if I... Uh, say, I don't believe we've been introduced. I'm Emma Milstein. Like Laura, I come from a distant region of the Empire. I was only able to attend Thor's thanks to a scholarship, in fact. It's very nice to meet you. A scholarship? Hmm, indeed. Now that you mention it, our instructor did say yours was the top score on the entrance exam. <sighs> I think I was outdone. Why a girl, no less? <laughs> you must be quite the prodigy. <laughs> Maybe it seems like it now, but really, I'm not. I don't have any training in the martial arts either, so this is the weapon they recommended for me. Cool! You got an orbital staff, too! Yours looks different from mine, though. Huh, so it does. I wonder if it's just cosmetic. Huh. Hmm? Is something the matter? We're all acquainted now. It's only proper that you introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's a pleasure to meet almost all of you. Uh, Elisa. Ruer, huh? What's it like living there? There's probably a new technological breakthrough every week. The Reinford Company is based in Ruer, and they're the largest heavy industry corporation on the continent, aren't they? I suppose they are. Uh, so, hey. I guess that bow must have been in that case you had with you when we first met, right? I've never seen one like it. Is there some kind of orbital mechanism built in? There is, but I don't see how that's any of your business. Ouch. Um, yeah. Anyone got any ideas on what to do now? We've all run into each other wandering around. How about we stick together? I think that would be for the best. It's not safe for a group of girls to travel alone. You may require protection. You needn't to be concerned about that. I beg your pardon? I don't mean to boast, but I'm confident my swordsmanship will be more than sufficient to protect us. For now, I think it's best to remain in separate groups. There are still two of us who remain unaccounted for. That's right. We still haven't run into that silver hand. In that case, two teams means double the chance to find them. Two teams is double the coverage, and double the chance of crossing paths with our missing companions. How's that sound? I have no objections. So then, shall we be off? All right. We'll see the four of you later then. She really doesn't seem like she's going to let that go, does she? It was clearly an accident. Everyone could see this. But I don't suppose it makes any difference to her. 
Still, is no one else worried about leaving a group of girls to fend for themselves in a place like this? There are four of us here. Perhaps one of us should go follow them. I don't think we have anything to worry about as long as Laura is with them. She really wears her skill on her sleeve. I doubt she drags around a sword that big just for show. It's certainly an enormous blade. I'd call it comically huge if it didn't look so dangerous. But at the end of the day, a lady is a lady. She's taller and sturdier than I am. Though I admit it's still hard to believe anyone could swing that beast of a sword. I'll bet she can whip it around without breaking a sweat. The Arsite School of Swordsmanship serves as a general basis for the techniques used by knights throughout the Empire. And her father, the Viscount, is arguably the strongest swordsman in the country. People call him the Radiant Blade Master. I doubt any of the other students here could even stand their ground against her in combat, much less beat her. Wow. Interesting. I didn't know there were still roots of the old knightly styles alive in the Empire. You sure know a lot about this stuff, Reen. A hobby of yours? I'm a swordsman myself. I guess the lore sort of comes with the territory. At any rate, how about we pick up the search? I'm worried about that silver-haired girl. And we still need to track down Duke Alborea's son, too. That's true. <laughs> I couldn't care less what happened to that pompous ass. He can rot down here. <laughs> Come on now, that's no way to treat someone you just met. Looks like the path splits. Which way do you think we should go? I feel a little wind blowing from the east. I bet the exit's that way. Ha! Now's our chance! My turn! A plus out. Oh, there seems to be a treasure chest here. What's wrong? M more monsters? No, not monsters. It's... <laughs> You're pretty sharp. Oh. It's the silver-haired girl. I'm glad to see you're all right. Though, it looks like there was nothing to worry about in the first place. Nope. I'm small and quick. These things can't lay a finger on me. Oh yeah, Fee Clausel. That's my name. You're just over halfway through. Keep it up. Later. Hey, wait! Are 
Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? I'll be fine. I'm used to this. See you at the end. What just happened? Wow! She certainly wasn't fibbing about being quick on her feet. I guess we really don't need to worry about her. Yeah, now I'm more convinced than ever that she knows exactly what she's doing. Just over halfway through? Has she already been to the exit and then come back? Just getting started. fighting up ahead. Come on! Uh, Rain! Wait for me! <laughs> Incredible! That was really something! Judging by that display, I don't think he needs any help from us. I take it that's another school of Imperial Swordsmanship? Right. That's court fencing, an agile style favored by the nobility. And judging by his poise, he's no amateur. Did you need something? <sighs> Sorry, I was just admiring your swordsmanship. I'm Reen Schwarzer. I didn't get the chance to introduce myself earlier. I I'm Elliot Craig. Guy Schwarzel, nice to meet you. I believe I have already introduced myself, but once again, I'm Yusis Alborea. And I have to say, I didn't think you had it in you. I'm impressed. What are you talking about? After all that bluster about finding your way to the exit alone, I wasn't expecting you to actually rely on others for help. I assume you came to your senses shortly after you stormed off, and then wandered back to apologize like a good boy. Truly, the virtue of the common man. Why, a preening noble such as myself would be far too proud to do such a thing. What the hell is your problem? really are all the same. So full of yourselves, it's a wonder you don't pop. And you're not just a garden variety noble either. House Alborea is one of the highest ranking in the country. I'll bet you just love looking down on us less fortunate souls, don't you? You're one to talk. I don't need a lecture in rank from the son of the Imperial Governor. Wait, what? Oh, I thought the name Regnitz sounded familiar. Karl Regnitz, the first commoner ever to hold the seat of Imperial Governor in Heimdall. The first to rule the capital. And this headstrong young lad just so happens to be a chip off that old block. Pretty rarefied air for a simple commoner, don't you think? What does that have to do with anything? Yes, my father is the Imperial Governor, but he earned that position through years of hard, honest work. Don't you go lumping him in with you nepotists who get your titles handed to you just for being born. Perish the thought. No, I mainly just regard your father as a reformist and a close friend of the Chancellor at that. And as you're vividly aware, his faction is in conflict with the Noble faction, led by none other than the four great houses. 
when you look at it that way, your vitriolic disdain for the nobility suddenly seems rather cheap, wouldn't you say? You, you son of a... M Magius, don't do it! I know he's taunting you, but lashing out at him isn't going to solve anything. And Eusis, don't you think that was a little uncalled for? I wasn't the one who started this. Let me... Damn it, just let me go already! I'm sorry, okay? Just... Leave me alone for a while. You guys should just go on ahead with him. Oh. I think you went a little too far, Eusis. Being at odds with Machias is one thing, but tracking his father into it is pretty low. You're better than that. <sighs> Perhaps I was a bit out of line. It would seem I still have much to learn. Uh-huh. You look shocked. Why? W well you're the son of Duke Alborea, right? I wasn't expecting the son of a noble to admit he was wrong. Ah, wait, no, that came out wrong. I'm, I'm sorry. There's no need to address me so formally. We may come from different social spheres, but here at this academy, we're supposed to be on equal standing. Or so the idea goes, anyway. Y yeah, that's true. I, I mean, yes, I'm with you all the way there. <sighs> is class really that big a deal here in the Empire? It is. This country has a long history, and the class system has been one of its central institutions for most of that. So what are you going to do, Eusis? Maki is said to go with you, but I don't want to press you into coming along if you don't want to. I was intending to press on to the exit by myself, but I'd prefer not to mimic the actions of his ilk, so I'll accompany you. W what? I I'm just surprised we're worthy of your company. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to having you on the team. Let's just go with that. We should get moving then. Leave it to me. My turn. Right. My turn. There in. All right. Right. What? Go. I'll hit. All right. My turn. It's my turn. My turn. Go. I'll have It's my turn. My turn. <sighs> he seems kind of imposing. I don't know how to break the ice. Alright! My turn! Here we go! 
very well. All right. My turn. My turn. I'll him. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. Very well. Go! I'll handle this. All right. My turn! My turn! Very well. My turn! It's mine. Turn them off! Possible. My turn. <laughs> I suppose I should thank you. <laughs> Leave it to <laughs> Here we go. I'll handle it. <laughs> it's mine. What? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'll handle it. My turn. It's my turn. My turn! My turn! Oh, wait. Seems to be a treasure chest here. Looks like we are. That definitely seems to be the exit. I can see the sunlight streaming in, so I'm guessing we're finally clear. Ugh, this was a complete waste of time. Pointless busy work at best. Considering the school's esteemed founder, I was expecting more of a challenge. But nothing here posed even a modest threat. Did we even fight the same enemies? I feel like I've been stretched to my limits. What was all that business about Class 7 anyway? Good question. We've got people here from different backgrounds, classes, even cultures. Is there some sort of secret agenda with this whole Class 7 thing that we just don't know yet? What was that? There! Gargoyle come to life? What sorcery is this? Ah! Are monsters like this common in the Empire? Not outside of old wives' tales, they aren't. Ah. It's cutting off our only route to the surface. No choice. We have to fight it. Right. Finally, an opponent worthy of my skill. Helios, help us. Watch out. This is a tough one. Alright! 
turn. My turn. Arcus activate. Ha! Ha! My turn.
Leave it to me. My 
Hunter. Marcus. It's my turn. I'll handle this. Very well. It's my turn. My turn. Right. Keep it up, everyone. I'll handle this. I go where the wind takes me. I did it! <laughs> I did it! I'm just getting started. Well, that should be the end of it. It's down, but not out. Oh. That's one hell of a second wind. 
I can appreciate a certain degree of tenacity, but this thing needs to just die. It's no use. We're too spent to go another... Guess I have no choice. Stand back! You've certainly got some good timing. <sighs> Seems like you're all okay, at least. I'm sorry we took so long. You're here, and that's what counts. So, a gargoyle, is it? I didn't expect to find the Dark Ages alive and well down here. It doesn't seem like it'll go down easily. Indeed. It's brushing us off as though we barely even scratched it. And with this many of us, if we can just find an opening? Fine. I guess I'll help out. Looks like you started the party without me. You. Releasing limiter. Take this! Break shot! An opening! Go! I think that's the end of it. At the very least, that creature doesn't seem like he'll be coming back for a rematch anytime soon. What happened there anyway? Right at the end of the battle... Now that you mention it, I did feel something wash over me for just a second there. It was like each of us were engulfed in some faint blue light. What? I did notice something as we fought. Perhaps it was just the blur of combat but I felt like I could see everyone's movements in precise detail. I don't think it was just your imagination. Agreed. I have a feeling what we just experienced was... The biggest selling point of the almighty Arcus? Give this man a prize. Uh. Looks like friendship and teamwork saved the day once again. I'm so proud of you guys! Anyway, that about finishes up today's special orienteering exercise. Aww, what's with the long faces? I thought you'd all be happy! What, what are we supposed to be happy about? I have so many questions, I'm not even sure where to start. Oh? I'll take a stab at it. What exactly is the purpose behind this Class 7? I mean, we get that it's supposed to be some sort of melting pot that includes a broad cross-section of people. But why were the nine of us chosen in particular? Hmm, that is a valid question. There's no single monolithic reason why you all made the list. But if I had to name a major contributing factor, it'd be those Arcus ornaments you've got there. How so? Well, like I explained earlier, the Arcus units are developed jointly by the Epstein Foundation and the Reinford Company. Like any battle ornament, they let you use arts, and these have communication functionality built right in. But their crowning feature is what's known as combat linking. That's the phenomenon you all experienced just now. So that's what that was. Seems like a pretty apt term. It did feel like we were all connected somehow. Precisely. Doesn't take a genius to imagine how much of an advantage a feature like that would be on a real battlefield. An elite unit that can sense each other's movements, acting in perfect sync even in the most chaotic conditions. You can hardly put a price on that! 
It could bring about a revolution in the way wars are fought. Hmm. It does sound rather... Idealistic. Well, yeah, the technology has its limits. Some have a natural aptitude for it, others just... don't. And out of this year's fresh batch of bright-eyed students, the nine of you turned out to have the highest aptitude. And since aptitude trumps background in class seven, well... Here you are. I see. But what gives us this aptitude, though, as compared to our peers? It just seems so... random. What indeed? As promised, if any of you have objections to being in this class, speak now or forever hold your peace. I think that pretty much covers the hows and whys of your situation. But this program isn't cheap to run, so we're not about to force anyone into it if they don't want to be here. You should also be aware that Class 7's curriculum will be tougher than any other class's coursework. Just fair warning. So now you know. And that leaves you all with an important decision to make. Will you stick with Class 7 or not? Oh, if you opt out, you'll just be placed in the class you would have been assigned to otherwise. There's no pressure. Nobles will land in class one or two, commoners in three, four, or five. It's still just the first day, so there's no real catching up you'd have to do. I'm sure you'd fit in just fine. I'll do it. Whatever class seven has to throw at me, I'm game. What? Just like that? So you're the first, then. You seem pretty sure about it. Any particular reason? Not really. I just feel like I've put my family out asking them to send me to this school. So, if it gives me more to show for my time here, I'll take whatever opportunities come my way. Hmm. A noble sentiment. Count me in as well. The greater the challenge, the more I can push myself to excel. One can't hone a blade without grit, after all. Let's make it three. Considering how far I came to attend this school, it'd be silly to back down before I even started. Well, looks like we've got the country's strongest freshman on board, and our foreign exchange student, too. Any more takers? Allow me to take part as well. I was only able to come because of the school's generosity, so I feel it's my duty to help in any way I can. S sign me up too! I kind of feel like fate brought us here for a reason, you know? And you all seem pretty easy to get along with. And that's a yes from our two Orville staff testers. Though I feel compelled to remind you, your weapons are still in the prototype stage, so on top of your other work, I'll be expecting reports from both of you. Maybe I spoke too soon. Let me join too. Huh? Oh, there's a surprise. I was almost certain your rebellious streak would see you opt out just on general principle. It does bother me that you've got us using these Arcus units that are still pretty clearly in development. But if I let every little nitpick like that hold me back, I'd never amount to much. <laughs> Words to live by right there. And that brings us to an even six. Now, what about you, Fee? Don't really care either way. You can choose. Not this time. This is one call you're gonna have to make for yourself. That was the deal, remember? You need to take control of your own life. Ah, <sighs> fine, I'm in. <sighs> well, at least you committed. We've got a magnificent seven now. Which leaves just the two of you. <coughs> I can see you got issues with each other, but that doesn't mean you can't at least try to work together. Why, if you just look past your differences and embrace the joys of youth, I'm sure you'll become the best of friends. Like hell we will! The exploitation of the common people by the aristocracy is a blight on every facet of Erebonian life. 
Unless something is done about it, this country has no future. I appreciate your candor, but I don't think you're going to achieve much by lecturing me about it. Well, at least that makes this simple. I, Yusus Alborea, claim my place as a member of Class 7. Huh? Wh why You're the son of a duke! Just the thought of being in the same class as commoners should make you sick! I'll thank you not to tell me how I'm supposed to feel. As far as the House of Alborea is concerned, there's little difference between other nobles and commoners. Besides, this should at least ensure I won't have fools flitting about every day trying to win my favor. <laughs> That said, I have little interest in getting drawn into your petty arguments on a daily basis, either. I think it would be prudent for us to go our separate ways. I'm certain we can at least agree on this, no? I don't need some pompous ass who coasts through life on his father's coattails telling me what to do! I'm in! Come hell or high water! You might have had your successes spoon-fed to you up to now, but no outmoded class system is going to hand you trophies anymore! <laughs> We'll see about that. <laughs> They're going to be like this pretty much all year, aren't they? Sure seems that way. I wouldn't bet on them ever seeing eye to eye. Oh. The pots shouldn't be too hard on the kettles. Give a guy a break. Well, how about that? Nine out of nine! With that, I'd like to congratulate all of you on being the first ever Class 7. I hope you keep those high spirits all year, because with the workload we've got planned for you, you'll need it. Well, well, I wasn't expecting Class 7 to turn out quite as diverse as this. It certainly promises to be an interesting year. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. But perhaps this too is the divine providence of the goddess, you no? Know? How do you mean? Seeing them there, I feel they have the potential to be the light we seek. A light that can break through the storm clouds that continue to build over our nation day by day.
to get going. Oh, Rain! Morning, Elliot. <laughs> Good morning. Are you heading to school now, too? How about we walk there together? Sure. It's getting late, though, so we might need to pick up the pace a little. No problem. I'm guessing everyone else left already, huh? I think so. I'm not sensing anyone else on this floor, at least. Gaius in particular is probably long gone by now, being the early riser he is. Uh, oh! Okay, then. He's not sensing anyone? What does that mean, exactly? Yeah, good morning. Morning! Are you two on your way to school? Uh, yeah. Come on, Emma, we're going to be late. Hey, wait for me, Lisa! We'll see you in class. <sighs> I never would have guessed she'd hold a grudge this long. She knows it was just an accident, right? She has to. Can't believe she'd be so... sensitive. No kidding. She's not even giving me a chance to apologize to her. Well, as long as you keep trying, I'm sure she'll understand. Eventually. Class Seven's got enough tension as it is, what with our two, uh, prideful warriors at each other's throats. So, I think it would be a load off everyone's mind if you and Elisa could make up at least. I'll certainly do what I can, whatever that may be. These past two weeks have really flown by, haven't they? It's funny, I went into this thinking combat practice would be the toughest part of the curriculum. Never would have guessed the academic side of things might give it a run for its money. Well, strong in body and mind is pretty firmly embedded into Imperial culture. I do get what you mean though. I figured I'd be able to coast through the year, but I've had to very quickly reevaluate that. Uh, you too, huh? I wish I were as smart as Machius or Emma. They don't seem to be having any problems at all. But then, Emma got the top score on the entrance exam, and I'll bet you anything Machias wasn't far behind. I'm sure. Yusus and Elisa are apparently doing really well too, as are Laura and Gaius. Really? Guess I'm just gonna have to suck it up then. Though I really do hope they don't mind. Huh? I'm not sure I follow. Oh, sorry. You got me thinking about Yusus and Laura. I've been talking to them the same way I talk to everybody else, but... They're both nobles, right? And Yusus's family rules over the whole eastern side of the Empire, so it kind of feels like I should address them more... formally. Well, they both said it was okay, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Though, you probably shouldn't go picking fights with Yusus every chance you get. Like a certain someone else. Oh, I don't plan on it. I'd hoped they'd get along a bit better over time, but if anything, Things seem to be spiraling downhill fast on that end. When the two of them are in the same room, there's just this constant tension in the air. It's not all Machias either. Yusus seems to enjoy provoking him at every opportunity. I can't even imagine what it would take to make them see eye to eye at this point. Yeah, I wish there was something we could do to help them get along. And that's where we'd be if we weren't in Class 7. Dormitory number 2, for all the common folk like us. Yeah, I guess so, huh? I'm still kind of shocked that Class 7 gets to have its own dormitory. Though, to be fair, I think that building was abandoned till this year. Seems like they renovated it just for us. Well, they did a good job. It's got a nice feel to it. I just wish it were a little closer to the Academy. Hey, you're in our way. Step aside at once. 
はあ<笑> Class seven, I see. Is something the matter? You're just a ragtag bunch of nobodies, aren't you? Come on, we're leaving. Yes, Patrick! A word of advice you might be part of a special class, but that doesn't change who you are. Never forget your place. Ah, <sighs> so they're from one of the upper classes. This is why I hate talking to them. Unfortunately, that attitude is all too common among the nobles. Thank goodness Laura and Yusis aren't like that. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty bad. That's the infamous dormitory number one, where all the nobility lives. It's supposed to be super fancy inside, with maids and butlers and everything. Wow, really? Yes, that's our cue to pick up the pace. Yeah, sorry. Oh, hey, have you picked out a club to join yet? Doesn't sound like you have to or anything, but it's probably a good way to meet people. No, I'm still looking. It's hard to decide on one. Stand, bow, be seated. As I'm sure you're all well aware, the Erebonian Empire was driven to the brink of collapse roughly 250 years ago. This was brought about by the conflict we know as the War of the Lions. A civil war lasting several years, staged over the throne of the late emperor by the most powerful of his potential successors. But of course, I'm not here to tell you that. If I were, I think even young children would be able to pass this course. <laughs> Rather, I'd like to discuss the effects this had on the empire as members of the aristocracy were drawn into the war. Many hired mercenaries turned to looting and pillaging, and a similar trend could even be seen among some of the knights. The land was left utterly devastated, and morale was at an all-time low. But then, lo and behold, into this nightmare stepped a man. A man willing to take a stand against this bloody war of succession. He was a wandering prince who began to rally forces from the outskirts of the empire, and would go on to make quite a name for himself. And that name, of course, was Dreykel's Rysay Arnor. He would later become known as Dreykel's the Lionheart, the 73rd Emperor of Erebonia and father of the Renaissance. Not to mention the founder of this very academy. Dreykel's army was initially rather small in number, but as he traveled across the empire, Winning over the hearts of influential sympathizers, his forces rapidly increased. Now, the place where Emperor Dreykels first began gathering his army was... Reen Schwarzer, would you care to tell the class?
Nice work, everyone! You made it through another grueling day of classes! In case you've been living under a rock, please don't forget that tomorrow is your first free day! It's not technically a day off, but there are no classes, so it's up to you what to do with your time! Why, you could go shopping in the capital if you wanted to! Or just do what I do and sleep all day. Sleep is so wonderful. Um, will the Academy's facilities still be open for our use? Yes, I'd like to be able to use the free study area in the library myself. Of course! This school shuts down for no one! So feel free to patronize any and all facilities as you like. A lot of clubs have meets scheduled for these free days as well, so anyone who's joined one should probably check on that. I see. I'll be certain to do so. Also, before you leave, we should go over what's happening next week. On Wednesday, you all have your practical exam. A practical exam? What does that entail exactly? It's part of your combat training. You'll be graded on your performance, so make sure you're well-rested and ready for battle by then. Might be a good idea to do some training on your own time, too, just to keep from getting rusty. Hmm. Interesting. I definitely don't like the sound of that. Oh, and one more thing. After the practical exam is over, I've got another important announcement about a major part of Class 7's curriculum that I haven't mentioned at all yet. What? Here it comes. So, whatever you choose to do on your free day, make it count for something. That concludes today's homeroom. Machias, if you'll do the honors. Yes, instructor. All rise.
should be the Student Union Building. I know the cafeteria is on the first floor, but I wonder where the Student Council room is. Hey there, first year. Um, how's it going? Academy life been treating you well this past half month? <laughs> oh, yeah, it has. Guess he must be a second year. It's not easy, but I'm managing. Mostly. Though I have a feeling it's only going to get harder from here on out. <laughs> of course it will. Your class is going to be more intense than the others, too. But you just hang in there, okay? Uh, okay. Um, wait. You're a second year student, aren't you? Do you mind if I ask your name? Hey now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. At first things first, how about you let me show you this cool trick I've been practicing? A trick? Hmm. You got a 50 mirror coin I can borrow? Mm. I, I think so. Pretty sure I do anyway. Cheers. All right. Watch closely. What? Now! Which hand is the coin in? Left or right? It's in your... Too bad. Guess you win. I'm usually pretty good at following moving objects, too. Though, wait. You said this was a trick. Which means... You catch on quick. Huh? <laughs> Keep up the good work, man. You're gonna need to be pretty tough to get through a year with Sarah as your instructor. Oh, and, uh, the student council room is on the second floor. Furthest room back. See you around. Have a good weekend. Wait, my 50... Mira. <sighs> he got me. Andy seemed to know I was heading to the student council room too. Somehow. Nice good. I haven't met many of the second years yet. I wonder if they're all like... Oh well, at least now I know where I'm going. Though if it really is open late, I guess there's no real rush. I might as well see what else people are up to in here. Pardon the interruption. Oh, you're 
that girl. <laughs> it's been about two weeks, hasn't it? Welcome to the student council room, Reen Schwarzer. Instructor Sarah sent you, right? Yes. So, you're a member of the student council then? I wonder if she got moved up a few years. She looks even younger than Fee. Hmm. Is something wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just wondering, um, are you a second year student? <laughs> I am, but there's no need for formalities with me. There's no junior or senior in my book. The name's Toa Herschel. I'm the student council president. P president? Uh-huh. Does that surprise you? I'm sure I'll have plenty of opportunities to interact with you and the other first years during your time here. So if there's anything you need help with, you just come and let me know, okay? I'll do everything in my power to make it better. Thank you. That's very kind. She's seriously the student council president? That's hard to believe. <clears throat> um, so, the reason I've come here is because you're holding on to something for class 7, right? Oh, of course. Here you go. Yours is the one on top. Let's see... Oh, our student notebooks! I completely forgot about these. I'm really sorry it's taken so long. Class 7's curriculum is pretty different from any of the other classes. And you're even using a different kind of battle orb mint, so yours had to be compiled separately. Meaning these notebooks have information in them about... The Arcus, yes! All the student notebooks double as instruction manuals for their accompanying battle orb mints. And the other first years are all using the same type as last year, so we could just reuse last year's template. But the Arcus type you're using works quite differently, so we had to write a whole new set of directions from scratch. Okay, that makes sense. But wait, who's we? Pretty much just me. Instructor Sarah asked me to do it on her behalf. Which means it's my fault this has taken so long. I'm really sorry. Oh, no, no. If anything, it, it sounds like we owe you a huge debt of gratitude for putting so much time and effort into it. Is that really part of the student council's job, though? It seems more like something our instructor should be handling herself. Technically, you're right. But she's always so busy. And I help out the other instructors a lot, too. So I don't mind lending her a hand from time to time. What a nice person. Maybe a little too nice for her own good. I doubt she ever gets a moment's rest around here. So you just need me to give these to the other students in Class 7, right? Yes, please. I really appreciate what you've all agreed to do, too. Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> I heard all about it from Instructor Sarah. She said you've agreed to help out the student council with our work, right? It's such a nice gesture! You're really getting Class 7 off to a great start here at the Academy. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Didn't you tell her that you wanted to help ease our workload? Something about wanting to better yourselves? To prove you were worthy of being a part of this prestigious new class? She said you were all really eager to help out, so I should try to delegate some of my duties to you. Thank you, my dear. I leave everything in your capable hands. Mwah! Mwah, indeed. I... I'm sorry. Did I misunderstand her or something? Oh, how embarrassing. I didn't mean to start trying to force work onto you when you've only just enrolled. <sighs> There's no way I can turn her down. No, no. Instructor Sarah is absolutely right. Your plate is as full as I've seen, so if I can help you in any way, please let me. Phew! I thought there had been a terrible misunderstanding there for a moment. <laughs> but don't worry, I won't give you anything too difficult. It'll mostly just be fulfilling requests from people in the Academy and in Trista. Requests? Yep. Sometimes people send in feedback and list things they'd like us to do for them. And we try to help out however we can. I'll pick some up for you to do by the end of the day. And drop the list in your mailbox at your dorm tomorrow morning. Will that be okay with you? Sure thing. Thanks. Dusk already? <sighs> what a day. 
can't believe she wound up treating me to dinner in the cafeteria. And she's still got more student council work to do yet. How is she so busy? Um... Hello? This is Reen Schwarzer speaking. Guten Tag, my favorite little wunderkind. I hear you had a nice little dinner date with the student council president. Ooh la la. If this is how you treat your favorite little wunderkind, I dread to think how you treat people you don't like. Would you care to explain why you've been signing me up for things behind my back? I'll skip the details for now, but it's got something to do with the other part of your curriculum that I'll be announcing next week. I thought it'd be a good chance for one of you to do a little rehearsal before the main event. And since the student council truly is busy, I figured, why not kill two birds with one stone? A fine plan, if I do say so myself. I have a feeling half the reason they're as busy as they are is because of certain instructors. But alright, I'm happy to play along. Basically, you just want me to spend my free day tomorrow helping the student council, right? Oh, that's entirely up to you. If there's a club you're interested in joining, far be it from me to force you away from it. No, to be honest, I still haven't found one that really clicks with me, so that won't be a problem. There is one question I'd like to ask, though. Why me, exactly? <clears throat> this seems like the kind of task typically entrusted to the class president or vice president. So, Emma, or Machias. And even if you were choosing based on social class, Eusus and Laura were both born into noble families. I wasn't. So what makes me so special, exactly? <laughs> well, in a sense, you're effectively at the center of Class 7. Pardon? I'm not saying you're its leader, of course. But in a class full of nobles, commoners, and exchange students, you in particular are... special. Surely even you can see that, no? Well... That's why I decided to give you first dibs, so to speak. I wanted to get an idea of how things might go from here on out. There's never been a class like yours before, after all. So there you have it. The beans have been spilled all over the place. Ball's in your court now. Wait, what are you drinking? Beer, of course. It's the weekend, and I'm stuck wasting away in my room, imbibing libations, alas, all by my lonesome. If only I had a classy gentleman friend who'd go out drinking with me. But woe of woes, such a man is nary to be found. Um, are you okay? Never better, but you. Instead of trying to put everything in its place, why don't you just go with the flow for a change? It seems like you're desperately trying to find something. But if you don't plant yourself somewhere, you're just going to blow away with the next big gust that comes along. <laughs> and on that note, make sure you're back in the dorm by curfew and all transgressions will be forgiven. Toodles! If I don't plant myself somewhere, huh? may have a few screws loose, but she's got a point. Maybe I should just try going with the flow and see what comes of it.
Not bad.
Now's our chance. We can do this. Turn.
time to begin our investigation. My turn. Yeah. Go! Go! Now's your chance! Right! All right. Go! Go! Yeah. It's my turn. Go! 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 My turn. It's my turn. Yeah. Yeah. a treasure chest here. Enemy sighted! Take him out! My turn! Too long! Thanks! My turn!
thank you. All right. My turn. Thanks. Kick it. Go. <clears throat> Leave it to me. My turn. Go. <clears throat> it's my turn. My turn. Here we go. <laughs> All right. We're open. Oh. <laughs> we made it through. This will take everything we have. My turn! Alright! 
Let's do this! Run! Run!
bad. But I don't think I can manage much more than this. I guess I should just be grateful I was able to pass the beginner examination at all. Better do some studying. It sounds like this is going to be a busy week. What with that ominous practical exam looming over us. Hmm. I do have that radio from George here. We had that orbital radio back home, too. Never knew they made them this small, though. Let's see... Which station is Radio Trista? Ah, there we go. It's 9pm and you're listening to Radio Trista. Welcome, welcome. Don't touch that dial, listeners. You found the right place to be tonight. It's time for the start of a brand new program here on Radio Trista, coming at you promptly every Sunday. I call it Abend Time, after the word for evening. Might be a little cliched, but sometimes simple is best, right? Cliches are cliches for a reason, after all. Anyway, my name is Misty, and I'll be your host. Hopefully I'll get to feature some famous guests at some point, so be sure you tune in every week or you might miss them. You know, she's got a pretty nice voice. This might be good to leave on in the background while I'm working. this month as we slowly near the end of April. Here in Trista, the beautiful Lino flowers have passed their peak and begun to wilt. But wilting flowers are beautiful in their own way, as they serve to remind us just how fleeting this existence truly is. I'm sure many of our listeners are students, busy with the challenges of adjusting to their new lives. But what harm is there in taking a moment to admire nature every now and again? It's good for what ails you, I say. Let's get your practical exam started, shall we? To be completely clear from the outset, this exam is about more than just testing your physical strength and stamina. It's designed to hone in on how capable you are of making strategic combat decisions on the fly. Defeating your opponent quickly is a good thing, certainly, but it won't be enough to score you high marks here. Huh. Interesting. So we're going to have to use our heads for this one, huh? <laughs> You'll see. Anyway, let's get this month's exam started, shall we? Reen, Elliot, Gaius, you're up first. Please step forward. Right. Uh-oh. Got it. Here we go. What's that? A, a monster? No, 
I'm not sensing any life coming from it at all. That's right. Think of it like a scarecrow. Only it's a moving scarecrow, I guess. Either way, it's not alive. I set its parameters fairly high, though, so it is formidable. But if you give it your all, I'm confident you can beat it. Probably. Make good use of your Arcus's combat link abilities, for example, and I bet it'll be a piece of cake. Hint, hint. Oh. <sighs> so that's what you're playing at. It's a fight they want. My turn. Uh. Leave it to me. My turn! My turn! Alright! My turn! My turn! Alright! Not yet! Leave it to me! I'm sorry, everyone! This looks bad. Alright. Thanks! My turn! My turn. Arthur, thank you. All right. It's my turn. My turn. Here we go. It's my turn. My turn! Leave it to me. My turn. Right. Is everybody okay? 
We won. D don't know how, though. Not bad. Not bad at all. Excellent use of combat links, too. Seems like the practice you got in the old schoolhouse really paid off. <laughs> it just may have. Oh? Have those three been training in secret? All right, on to the second group. Laura, Emma, Eustace. Come forward. than I thought it would be. It does seem like combat links are the key to fighting it effectively, though. That's rather unfortunate. Instructor, may I ask a question? What exactly was that marionette we just fought? <laughs> yeah, that thing was weird. A machine, maybe? I've never seen anything else like it. Something I got roped into working with a while back. I'd rather not use it if I don't have to, but I can't deny it serves as a valuable function. And it's rather customizable, too. I mean, it did its job quite well during our test, didn't it? So there you go. I get the feeling there's a whole lot she'd rather not tell us. Anyway, that brings this month's practical exam to an end. But as you might recall, I told you I had a big announcement for you today, too. Are you all ready to hear what it is? I'll give you a hint. It's about a special part of Class 7's curriculum. Give up? <laughs> it's really bugging you now, isn't it? Well, I'll come clean. The special task you're about to be assigned is none other than... A field study. Field study? Oh, I don't like the sound of this one bit. You'll be split into two groups, A and B, and each sent to a different location. And while you're there, you'll be given a number of tasks to complete. Doesn't that sound like fun? Uh, we only just got to the academy, and we're already being sent somewhere else? Will you not be coming with us, Instructor? Oh, of course not! It'd be much too easy for you if I were there to bail you out every time the waters of life came seeping in. You've got to be cruel to be kind and all that. <sighs> well, I'm certainly not opposed to a challenge if it allows me to advance my training. Instructor Valestine, where exactly will we be going and when? Ah, oh, yes, about that. As I said, you'll be split into two groups, A and B. Each of you, please come forward and take one of these to see how the groups have been divided and where each is being sent. Huh? What? Well, these are certainly some interesting groupings. Keldig and Parm. Are they both in Erebonia? Yeah. Kildick's a market town on the east side of the Empire. And Parm is situated in the Deep South. It's known for its spinners. All that way? How irritating. I'm less worried about where we're going than the utter lack of sense that went into these groupings. Unbelievable. You'll be leaving this weekend, and we'll be out in the field for two days' time. Your means of reaching your respective locations will, of course, be by train. So do make sure you're thoroughly prepared, rested, and rearing to go before the big day. You did really well, Reen.
I still haven't been able to apologize to her. Now, we can't exactly avoid working with one another when we're in the same group. I'm sure this is pretty awkward for her too, so I really want to say something. But when am I going to get the chance? Ah. Uh... Morning, Elisa. Morning. You're, uh, early. We don't have to be here for another 20 minutes, you know. Well, well, the same goes for you. Uh, what time did you wake up? Around five, I think. Though, I always try to be up by then. Oh, uh, really? Morning practice? Oh, you haven't joined any clubs, have you? So, I guess not. How does she know that? No, it's just... A force of habit. I've gotten used to waking up early. You're in the lacrosse club, right? So I'm guessing you do have to deal with morning practice sometimes. Yeah, twice a week, apparently. I'm, I'm really sorry. sorry. Wh why, why are, are you, you apologizing? apologizing? <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly interesting. But no, I really am sorry. I knew it was just an unfortunate accident from the very beginning. I mean, I was on top of you. I just... I kind of lost my head, and before I knew it, I'd slapped you. And you had your hands out like you were trying to catch me, right? So if anything, I should be thanking you. Don't worry about it. That trapdoor was obviously designed so we wouldn't get hurt from the fall. If I hadn't tried to play the hero, I wouldn't have been pinned under you, and none of this would have happened. There's no way you could have known that, though. No matter how you look at it, I'm the one in the wrong here. So, thank you for trying to protect me. And sorry again. No, it's... I mean... You're... Welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, I have trouble with these kinds of things. My little sister is always getting on my case for being so easily flustered. Oh, you have a younger sister? Uh, that's a question for another time. I think I'm the same way. I've been trying to apologize for the past couple weeks now. But every time I set my mind to it, I always just wound up avoiding you. <laughs> really? You did try to help me out in class last week, though. Oh, you noticed. I was hoping that would give us a chance to talk. Though, you didn't need my help in the end, so it didn't really do much good. I still appreciate the thought. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, anyway, we've safely established that what happened wasn't your fault, but the result of it is another issue entirely. The... result? What are we talking about now? Oh, come on! You have to know what I mean! This is still in regards to the accident in the old schoolhouse, right? Yes! Specifically, the part where your face ended up right in my... You know, and I forbid you from ever thinking about that, ever. Forget it ever happened. Are we clear? It, yes, perfectly. Trying to avoid thinking about it is just going to make it harder to forget, though. Huh? Oh. Oh, good morning. Good morning. A lovely day, isn't it? <laughs> you two certainly got here early. Looks like you finally managed to make up, too. Oh, uh, well... <laughs> yeah, I think we're on good terms now. Thanks for your concern. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. It's been a bit trying watching the two of you simmer these past weeks. And I know Elisa has been desperate to apologize for her behavior this whole time. Whoa, whoa! That's only because I thought it would be awkward for two people who aren't talking to work together in the same group! Don't go getting the wrong idea or anything. Whatever you say. <laughs> well, as long as the two of you have smoothed things over, that's what's important. <laughs> now that we're all here, let's say we head out. The train's not due for a while longer, so this could be a good opportunity. We can swing by a few shops and stock up on supplies before heading to the station. <clears throat> uh, that's a good idea, actually. The Academy's facilities are supposed to be open early today, too. Oh, that's perfect. We can make use of the Engineering Club's facilities before we head out, too. Shall we depart, then?
get started. Come on, draw a card. Looks like I'm going first. Do that. Easy on me, okay? Okay then, let's draw! Looks like you're up first. Mirror! Playing that now? I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I win! Then let us begin our duel. Please draw a card. The first move is yours. We're evenly matched. Let's redraw. The first move is yours. We're evenly matched. Let's redraw. <laughs> then I'll make the first move. Well played. I didn't expect that. Divine Bolt! Divine Bolt! Divine Bolt! Mirror! An excellent duel.
Ministry of Railways wishes to thank all passengers for their patronage. This transcontinental train is bound for Crossbell. The next stop is Keldic. Keldic. Passengers traveling to Bereahard. Please change trains at this stop. Wow, so this is Keldic. It seems like a really relaxing little town. Though there are a lot more people here than I expected. I imagine they've come for the Grand Market. Even merchants from other countries regularly come to see it. Sounds like this place is as popular with the tourists as the capital then, but for a whole different set of reasons. Keldic's also widely renowned for their local beer, which they make using rye. But you're all still miners, so I'm the only one here who gets to drink it. Are you trying to make us jealous? We don't really care, you know. Anyway, let me show you to the inn. It's, uh, right over there. Uh, okay, let's go. Well, well, I hadn't expected to see the Purple Lightning herself in such a quaint little town. Hmm, and the chicks with her seem like an interesting lot, too. Yeah, no time for that now. I have more pressing matters to attend to.
Nothing hits the spot quite like a cold beer. She looks like she's having the time of her life. How many pints has she downed already? It's not even new. Oh, you kids are still here? I'll just be hanging back and enjoying myself. So go on ahead and get started. Don't mind me. We have questions for you, though. What's with these field study tasks? I'm glad they're not as difficult as I was expecting, but they're just... So... Well, it makes sense you'd have some doubts. You only need to do the ones it says are required, though. Feel free to just ignore the rest if you want. I don't care. Up to you how much or how little you want to do. Hmm? S stop being so irresponsible and... Wait. These kinds of decisions are as much a part of our field study as the tasks themselves. Oh, what? B what do you mean? <laughs> You have two days. Trista isn't far from here, so you'll be returning to the Academy tomorrow evening. Until then, you can spend your time here, however the four of you see fit. Every decision rests on your shoulders. I won't be forcing you to do a thing.
these windmills sure make the town feel pretty laid back. True. This scenery is surprisingly relaxing. There's a chance. Let's get him. Go. Right. Mike. Right. My turn. It's Mike. Of course. My turn. Right. 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 My turn. Oh, we did it.
Wow, check out all these stalls. Thanks. 
My turn. You have my face. I can do this. My turn. Challengers.
chest. Is this a farmhouse? Where we are. Hmm. It says Lunaria Nature Park.
Stitch is out! <laughs> My turn! I can do this! Of course! <laughs> Here we go! Right! Of course! Here we go! My turn!
this would be a really tranquil area, if not for the monsters. Yeah, just be careful. Is that a treasure chest? Treasure chest?
Transcontinental Railroad, huh? Guess that'll take you out of the country. Yeah. If you keep on heading east, you'd eventually reach Borrelia Fortress. Now's the chance. Let's get him. Here we go. It's my turn. My turn. Of course. Here we go. It's my turn. Of course. You still.
was delicious. Those are some seriously fresh vegetables, too. Yeah, nothing beats food made from local ingredients. I quite enjoyed the rye bread myself. I suppose this whole field study thing isn't so bad when you take the menu into account. I wonder what the others in Group B are doing right now. Somehow I doubt they're sitting around a table and talking like we are. That would certainly be a shock if they were. but question what exactly Class 7's purpose is, though. Instructor Sarah says it's about Arcus, but I don't think that's the only reason we've been brought together. I'm certain it's not. If that were all, today's field study tasks would serve little purpose. It seems as though she's trying to make us experience... I don't know. Things. Like all kinds of things, big and small. What I can't wrap my head around, though, is why. Yeah. Instead of trying to put everything in its place, why don't you just go with the flow for a change? It seems like you're desperately trying to find something. But if you don't plant yourself somewhere, you're just gonna blow away with the next big gust that comes along. What do we have to offer one another, when our reasons for enrolling at Thor's in the first place are undoubtedly very different? Our reasons? I haven't considered that. My reason for enrolling was quite simple. I aim to come ever closer to my goal. Or, rather, to the person whom I regard as such. Who's that? <laughs> this is neither the time nor the place to discuss such matters. Best to save that topic for another day. What about you, Elisa? Why did you enroll at the Academy? Hmm... There's no one single reason, but I think I just wanted to assert my independence. I mean, my situation back at home isn't exactly ideal, and this seems like a good way to get out and do more, I guess. I see. Hmm. It sounds like I'm probably in the minority, then. See, I wasn't intending on coming here at all originally. I wanted to do something completely different. You did? Oh, yeah. You said you were really hoping you'd get into a music academy, right? Oh? <laughs> well, I wasn't that serious about it or anything. What about you, Reen? You're the last holdout, and since you're the one who brought it up, it's only fair you answer the question, too. Me? Hmm. I wanted to find myself, I guess. Find yourself? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. That makes it sound like a much bigger deal than it actually is. That's the best way I can think of to put it, though. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Going on a journey of self-discovery? It's actually a pretty cool answer. Yeah, I had no idea you were such a romanticist. You sure don't come across as one. <sighs> I shouldn't have said anything. But we're not actually going to sleep yet, are we? Not until we write our reports for the day. I want to shut off my brain so badly right now, but it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. <laughs> she seems to have forgotten all about the room situation, and I'm not about to remind her. Reen? Hmm? What is it? I was unsure whether to ask or not, but I've decided that this question bears answering. Why have you chosen to hold back? What? Your sword style and technique. It is the Eight Leaves, One Blade school, is it not? 
Popularized by the sword hermit, Yun Kafai, it combines the best elements of other Eastern sword styles. Those who master any of its forms are referred to as a divine blade, and are said to understand the true nature of all things. You certainly know an awful lot about it. I didn't think it was particularly renowned here in the Empire. We of the Arsade School consider the studying of other swordsmanship styles to be an essential part of our training. In addition, my father once told me, if you follow the path of the sword, it is only a matter of time before you encounter a follower of the Eight Leaves. Your father said that? <laughs> it's an honor to be acknowledged by the Radiant Blade Master himself. <laughs> I'm nothing special, though. I'm just a dropout who's never even been able to progress past beginner level. I did train under Master Ka Fai for a while, but I started to feel like I couldn't go any further with my abilities, and he cut my training short. W what? So I'm really not holding back. Honest. I actually kind of feel like I'm dirtying the good name of the Eight Leaf School, in fact. But this is my limit. I'm sorry I can't quite live up to your expectations. <sighs> Laura? You have no reason to apologize to me. This is a matter you must come to terms with on your own. Though I'll admit to some disappointment, I was hoping you'd prove to be a good sparring partner. I... I'm going to practice outside for a bit. Please go and finish your report with Elisa and Elliot. There's a lot he doesn't want to talk about, huh? I can see in his eyes sometimes that he's bottling something up and trying really hard to keep anyone else from noticing. You've noticed it too? <laughs> you sure have taken quite an interest in him. I, I was just trying to work out the best time to apologize, that's all. It's not like I've been consciously paying attention to him or anything, honestly. <laughs> Rin's not the only one bottling up his feelings though, is he? You've been doing the same thing. I... Yeah, I guess I have. Ooh, you're moving up in the world! <laughs> I've got a little reward here for you! Keep up the good work!
We should take a right here to reach the nature park. Right. Let's go. Watch out, guys! My turn! That's a challenge! Of course! Hey. I can do All right! Right! Go! I'll get you up! 
Is everybody okay? <laughs> I did! to those bossy guys who were here before. If they really are the culprits, maybe they've run away already? Hmm. This woodland is too dense to reliably enter it whether anyone awaits within. Yeah. Hmm, what's this? It's... a bracelet? Hmm. How did a bracelet come to be in a place such as this? Just as I thought. This bracelet has the same design on it as the ones that the merchant from the capital was planning on selling. Really? You're sure? Positive. There's not a doubt in my mind that it was designed by the same person. Care to give a second opinion on that, Laura? I'm hardly qualified to weigh in on recent trends. But there do seem to be a number of similarities between this bracelet and the merchant's goods. So, the fact that it's here means... Yeah. It's extremely likely the culprits we're looking for are inside this park. Sure seems that way to me. <laughs> hmm. 
It only opens from the inside. I suppose that leaves us little choice. Are you going to destroy it? Will you be able to? The lock seems quite solid, but my sword should be strong enough to. Wait. I'll do it. I can get it done more quietly. Oh? R really? Well, what are you going to do? The Eight Leaves One Blade School's Fourth Form Autumn Leaf Cutter. Hmm? Huh? Seriously? Wow! You cut it right in two! I did, thankfully. Spectacular. It's an honor bearing witness to one of the skills of the Eight Leaves School. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm still more or less a beginner. Anyway, we don't have much time left. Let's head inside and see if we can find them. Right! We need to find them before the sun starts to set. Looks like we can still make it after all. Excellent. Come then, we must make haste. There's tons of little stone monuments in here. Yeah, what do you think they're supposed to be? I imagine they were made by the animists in this province. Oh, 
treasure chest. The advantage is ours. Go! Go! And open! It's my turn. My turn. Right. Off guard. Go! Here we go. It's my turn. Right. Of course. My turn. I can do... Right. Right. Here we go. Go! And open! This way's a dead end. Yeah, this park covers a lot more area than I was expecting. Oh, the treasure chest! That looks like a strong one. Be careful! A nice spot. The advantage is ours. Here we go. go. And open. It's my <laughs> right now. Go. go, go, and open. I can do this now. I'll make you up. <laughs> is everybody up? right? <laughs> I did it. Is that a treasure chest? Ah! sense anyone in this area. That looks like a strong one. Be careful! Here we go. It's my... Go! Oh, 
住！
right here. You have my fit. My turn. Go! My turn! I can do it! Go! I'll get 
Is that a treasure chest? Charging station. We must be in the most remote reaches of the park. There they are. 
Not bad for a night's work. And if those idiots don't withdraw that petition, we'll be able to make even more. Don't get carried away now. We get a reward for all this anyway. We're making out just fine as it is. Still, who were those guys? The provincial army seemed happy to go out of their way for them. No idea. But then, I can never figure out what that man's thinking. None of our business either. We just need to be ready to abandon this place at a moment's notice. You're not going anywhere. What? Who's there? Oh, you're those students from yesterday. I, I know I locked the gate. Don't tell me you broke in. Indeed we did. It looks like the stolen goods are all here too. We caught you red-handed. Let's take them out! They're just kids. They should be no match for us. <laughs> Since we're all alone out here, ain't nobody gonna see a thing. Hope you're ready for the beating of your lives! I highly doubt we'll be the ones to endure a beating here today. As long as we make good use of the Arcus's combat links... Yeah, they don't stand a chance. Here we go! Enemies ahead! We'll have to fight! Here we go! Some kind of joke. They're kids! How pitiful. That barely even qualifies as a warm up. Well, when I used to instruct Sarah's training exercises, warm ups take on a whole new meaning. <laughs> That's very true. Bottom line, we won, fair and square. I'd suggest you surrender yourselves and apologize to everyone in the Grand Market for all the trouble you've caused. And we'll be returning those stolen goods to their rightful owners, too. We would also be very interested to learn who hired you. You must be out of your damned minds if you really think you've won! Hmm? Elliot? What's wrong? I, I don't know. I just... I just thought I heard the sound of a flute. It sounded like the cry of an enormous beast. What's happening? It's coming this way! I believe we're dealing with the ruler of this forest. What would you suggest, Reen? <sighs> well, they may be thieves, but we can't just leave them to die. We're going to have to fight it. Understood. Uh, all right. Idios, help us. Be careful, this one looks strong. Right. 
turn. My thing. It's my turn. Let's go. My turn. Let's go! Hey! 
it! It's my 
turn? My turn. Here we go. Arc. My turn. Done for. <sighs> Still, at least we were able to defeat it. Reen, what was that skill you just performed? Oh, it was something I've been working on for a while. This was the first chance I had to put it through its paces, though. I definitely feel like I'm getting the hang of it now. I see. <laughs> you really are amazing, Reen. You're always there to help us when we need it most. No, that's not true. There's really only so much I can do on my own. We wouldn't have been able to defeat that thing if we hadn't all been working together as a team. This was a victory for Group A as a whole. <laughs> well said. Indeed. Unbelievable. Ah, what are these kids even doing here? That bastard. This wasn't supposed to happen. Who are you talking about? Oh, it seems we have some unwelcome guests. There they are! And they're not alone. Put your hands in the air! Don't try to resist. <sighs> Why are you surrounding us and not them? Keep your mouth shut! Don't think we're gonna go easy on you just because you're students. <laughs> Looks like all your hard work was for nothing, huh? Sucks to be you! They're not even trying to hide their involvement. Utterly shameless. You're jumping to an awful lot of conclusions. I see two groups of people in a collection of stolen goods, but no indication of which group was responsible. Do you have any way to prove that the four of you aren't the perpetrators? What? Do you intend to frame us? This is preposterous! I'm just telling you that you need to mind your own business and learn your place. The Kreutzen province is the territory of Duke Alvarea. And I will not have a gaggle of bratty students poking their noses where they don't belong. You will back down now, or we'll be more than happy to arrest you right here and drag you to Berea Hard City, kicking and screaming. Damn. This is ridiculous. I'm afraid you'll be doing no such thing. What? Who's there? Oh. It, it's the Railway Military Police. Railway Military Police? Yeah, the RMP. They're supposed to be the most elite unit in the whole of the Imperial Army. I see Maiden. Why is one of the Chancellor's dogs come here? What is the meaning of this? This area is under the jurisdiction of the Kreutzen Provincial Army. The Imperial Army has no right to intervene. With all due respect, Keldic is a major interchange station in our railway network. So in point of fact, we have every right to investigate any incidents that occur in this general vicinity. As I'm sure you well know. Oh. And in accordance with our investigation thus far, after having questioned all those connected to the incident, 
we have concluded that it is impossible for any of these students to be guilty of these crimes. Do you wish to contest this judgment? Uh -huh. hmm. I suppose not. Well then, may I suggest you leave us to do our jobs? The RMP will take responsibility for returning all of the stolen goods to their rightful owners as well. Uh. Men! Withdraw! We're returning to Keldic! Yes, sir. Understood, sir. You've got to be kidding me! We had a deal! Take them into custody. Yes, ma'am. Oh, crap. Totally boned. There's no point in resisting. They're coming with us. Dog. Huh. She's really pretty. Is she really part of the RMP? Hmm. <laughs> Thank you all very much for your assistance. My name is Captain Claire Revelt of the Railway Military Police. We're a division of the Imperial Army. And you are the visiting students from Thor's Military Academy, are you not? I'll need to file a report about what happened here. So would the four of you mind accompanying me? But I'm not that good. Oh! Instructor? I was wondering when you'd show up. It's been a while, Sarah. That it has. Six months, give or take? Honestly, I had no idea you RMP folks were gonna get involved with this. I suppose you had everything that was happening here figured out all along. You overestimate my abilities. I did receive a report that suggested there might be trouble here, but that's it. Oh, from your brother, I take it. Nothing gets past you lot. We're just trying to make sure we're prepared to deal with any problems that might arise. But I'm sorry to say I don't have any more time to catch up with you right now. I really need to be taking my leave. I wish all the best to you and the rest of Class 7. Right.
She's asleep again. You don't think she's faking it, do you? Hmm, no. Judging by her breathing, I believe she really is asleep. Well, it sounds like Group B turned out to be a complete disaster. If she had to deal with them, then come back here on the same day, I'll bet she's totally spent. Yeah, good point. Anyone would be exhausted trying to sort that out. It's hard to imagine her actually working hard, though, considering her usual attitude. It does seem as though she's genuinely looking out for us, however. So, this is how our first field study trip comes to an end, huh? I think I might have an idea now as to why we're here, though. I had the same thought. Testing the Arcus is clearly a big reason for coming here, but it's not the only reason. I think it has more to do with making sure we see everything that's going on with our own eyes. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Learning more about places in Erebonia we've only read about in books, and getting to see the issues occurring in those regions firsthand, just like in Keldic. Indeed. And just as we thought and acted swiftly in the face of crisis this time, so too may we be called upon to do so again. These field studies may aim to test and cultivate those skills in preparation for our futures. Exactly. Add to that good judgment, decisiveness, and general conduct, and I'd say we have a pretty clear picture as to why we're out in the field. Basically, we're training everywhere we go. Well, you're about half right. Instructor! I was so certain you were sound asleep. <laughs> what can I say? I can nod off and back on again in the blink of an eye. It's what I do. As you rightly noted, having first-hand knowledge of the areas to which you might be deployed is of tremendous importance, as is the ability to make swift, accurate judgments and solve problems with or without orders. Developing all these skills to their fullest is definitely a major part of why you're undertaking these field studies. Just as I thought. It's an interesting approach, but honestly, I've never heard of any other military academy trying it. Hmm. You say we're only half right, however. Which begs the question, what's the rest of the story? Hmm? Is something wrong? Oh, no. Not at all. I was just thinking about what we did during your field study and why we were doing it. The whole concept seems eerily similar to the M.O. of Bracers. <sighs> Now that you mention it... The Bracer Guild prides itself in protecting civilians over all else, so it seems an unusual source of inspiration for a military academy. But the tasks we were given in Keldic do seem to align themselves quite well with the Bracer's basic philosophy. Yeah, I guess so. Their emblem depicts a supporting gauntlet, and that's pretty much exactly what we've been for these people. Bracers still have branches all over the continent, but you hardly ever see them in Erebonia anymore. <laughs> well, you got me. Which means... seriously when she says things like that that conspicuously falls asleep. Well, whether or not we did in fact get her, it still seems like Bracers are somehow related to our activities here. Not that Instructor Sarah is likely to come clean about our involvement anytime soon. I suppose until she does, all we can do is prepare ourselves in body and mind for our next field study. Yeah. Hmm? Is there something else bothering you? Oh, no. It's just, well, we've been in the same class for a month now, and this whole time I've been kind of keeping you in the dark. What do you mean? You aren't referring to the issue regarding your swordsmanship, I take it? No, it's not that. It's something I've been hiding from you all this time, regarding my social class. What? Are you saying your family... Yeah, I dodged the question when Machias asked. But technically, I come from a family of nobles. Uh, uh. My hometown is Ymir, in the Northern Mountains. I'm the son of its ruler, Baron Schwarzer. You're from Ymir? Schwarzer? Now that you mention it, I have heard the name before. An honorable family, closely tied with the Imperial family themselves, despite being headed by a mere Baron. I, I never would have imagined you might be the son of a noble too. 
<laughs> I wouldn't have expected you to. I don't act like one. My dad and mom are both quite easygoing individuals. They don't behave like your typical nobles at all. And technically, since I was adopted, I don't have any actual noble blood running through me. I'm upper class in name only. So, you... Hmm. Sounds like you've got your own issues to deal with just like the rest of us, huh? <laughs> I don't think of it as a big deal, and I don't want you to think of it as one either. I just didn't want to keep it a secret any longer. After everything we've been through these past few days, I owe you guys that much. I mean, you're all going to be a major part of my life from here on out. It's only fair to share as much as I can with you, right? I don't know what to say. You consider us to be major parts of your life? Honestly, has anyone ever told you that you can be way too serious sometimes? Just be sure you reveal your true identity to the others when we get back, too. Oh, I intend to. <sighs> ah, youth. Still, even discounting the strangely perfect timing of the railway military police, that ruler of the forest they ran into in the nature park, seems to be a harbinger of something big happening behind the scenes. wasn't expecting the Icy Maiden to show up when she did. We may need to adjust our plans to compensate for this interference. That won't be necessary. This was not a significant setback. If anything, it provided an unexpected bonus. Giving us a valuable glimpse into the means through which the RMP and Intelligence Division coordinate their efforts. With both organizations posing sizable threats to our operation, that information alone makes this all worthwhile. <laughs> A valid point. Should we proceed as planned, then? Of course. The tyrant must yet face the merciless hammer of judgment. Yes. May his lofty ambitions be crushed to dust and swept away. Keep up the good work! I think you could have done better than that. Late May. The lino flowers that painted Trista's spring fields had faded, replaced by lush greenery and a refreshing breeze. With the trials of last month's field study behind us, we found ourselves caught up once more in the bustle of school life. Both our combat training and academic studies continued to become more and more demanding, but May also heralded the beginning of specialist classes more befitting a military academy.
The Orbal Revolution 50 years ago changed the way wars were fought forever. There are a number of reasons for this fundamental change, but four factors in particular that I would argue to be the most important. The first is the invention of orbital guns, cannons, and other weaponry. The increased accuracy of these weapons, as well as their ease of maintenance and manufacture, instantly rendered all other firearms obsolete. The second factor is the associated mechanization of the military. Orbital technology led to the formation of armored divisions made up of tanks and armored cars. The impact this new kind of tactical unit had on the battlefield, with its enhanced offense, defense, and mobility, cannot be overstated. The third factor is the invention of airships. Warships that rely on the gravity manipulation ability of a flight field to remain in the air simply did not exist before the revolution. The sudden addition of a whole new dimension to war, the sky, made countless new strategies viable that were previously unimaginable. And the last factor is the creation of an entirely new practical science, which may be the biggest, most important change of all. Without orbital technology, such a concept would scarcely even have been conceivable. But now we'd be virtually crippled without it. Green Schwarzer, can you tell the class what that new scientific breakthrough was? Why did Lady Laura have to be placed in a class like that? I was truly looking forward to studying alongside her. Is that girl next to her not the one who scored the highest on the entrance exam? I believe so, though I also hear she's a mere commoner. There's something about that silvered hair girl that I find oddly soothing. If she'd let me stroke her hair if I were to ask nicely. That's quite enough, idle chatter. We are members of Class 1. We are above such droll behavior. As well, we cannot allow ourselves to be bettered by that rabble, even in something as insignificant as the culinary arts. Of course not. I'm so accustomed to our chef doing all of the cooking, however, that I must admit I'm finding this all rather challenging. Get a little less obvious they're talking about us? I mean, seriously. It stands to reason they'd be curious about our class. It's hard to blame them for that, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've wished that plenty already. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally getting the hang of using an orbital computer. Likewise. I was lost at first, but it's slowly beginning to make more sense. Well, it is cutting-edge technology here in Erebonia, so I think most people are confused until they've gotten used to it. Machius and Eusis both picked it up surprisingly quickly, though. Yeah, but academics are their thing. And I'm pretty sure Machius has been interested in computers for a while, too. Eusis also seems to get the hang of things far quicker than most people, even if he's not interested in them at all. Which probably just adds insult to injury for Machius. I'll bet. I hear they were really butting heads during last month's field study. They were. At one point, things almost took a violent turn. 
we were able to hold them back, but I don't think we could have kept him under control for long if Instructor Sarah hadn't arrived. <sighs> we really need to do something about them, but I have no idea what. I don't either, but you're right. This has gone on for way too long as it is. It needs to stop. Green Schwarzer. <sighs> huh? Isn't he from Class 1? Patrick, is it? That is correct. My full name is Patrick T. High Arms. I don't believe I need to say anything more than that. What? So, you're from the High Arms family. Are they prestigious? About as prestigious as they come. The High Armsies are one of the four great houses. Though they're slightly lower in rank than the Alvareas. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant no offense. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I didn't come here to talk to commoners or foreigners. I came to bring gladsome tidings to you, Reen Schwarzer. I am generously extending you welcome to make use of the accommodations on the third floor of the Student Union Building. You mean... The third floor? That's where the noble salon is, right? Your father may be a mere baron, but that still makes you a noble. And though you've had the misfortune of sharing a class with this riffraff, I have decided to use my good name as a member of the High Arms family to afford you the privilege of joining us. I do hope you appreciate it. Well... How can I turn him down politely? <sighs> this hardly strikes me as the best place to be recruiting new members. Uh, Yusus? Yusus Salborea? I wasn't aware the third son of the High Arms family counted playing factions among his hobbies. If you wished for company in the salon, should you not have come to me first? You? You've been invited countless times. You, you simply choose not to come. Despite there being no shortage of second years practically begging for your company. I have no interest. <laughs> Suit yourself, then. But you, Schwarzer, make sure you think long and hard about this. If you care about your future, you need to start thinking about the connections you're making and the side you're taking. He's certainly not shy. No, he's not. I wasn't sure how to turn him down, either. Thanks for stepping in, Yusis. <laughs> I wasn't trying to help you. But I did cause you some trouble during last month's field study, so... No. That's all. Last month's field study? Is he...? Yeah. I think he means the run-in we had with the Provincial Army. Ah. Uh. So he feels partially responsible for his family's actions, then. He must have been looking for a way to apologize to you. Huh. I guess he has a nice side after all. All rise, bow. Well, I'll see you later, Reen. Later. Oh, are you two going to club activities today? Yeah, I am. Did you want to have dinner together later? We've been eating in the cafeteria an awful lot lately, so maybe we could go to the cafe in Trista today for a change of scenery? Sounds good to me. You want to just meet up in the entrance hall later? Sure. See you then.
Oh, hi, Elisa. Are you off to club practice, too? Oh, <laughs> no, not today. Um... What is it? Is there something you wanted to ask me? I... it's nothing! I'll see you later! Uh... what was that all about? <laughs> Did you do something else to upset her? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, I suppose it's possible I did something wrong without even realizing it. Knowing her. <laughs> I was speaking in jest, I assure you. Are you planning on going into the old schoolhouse again tomorrow? Yeah. The principal did ask me to keep an eye on it, so I thought I'd make time for a quick look inside. Alright. Please let me know when you're planning to begin the expedition, if you would. I have club activities tomorrow, but as far as I'm concerned, the old schoolhouse takes priority. Thanks. I'll let you know. Excellent. I'll see you tomorrow, then. You're in the chess club, aren't you, Machius? Or are you planning on studying in the library? <laughs> Since when was it any of your business what I choose to do after class? Uh, no, I just... Have I... done something to upset you? Not especially. It's actually my fault for being deceived so easily in the first place. Oh. Let's just say I haven't got a drop of noble blood in my veins. So I guess we're all in equal standing here. I I'm really sorry. I wasn't trying to deceive you. I just... Save your breath. Whether you're a noble or not is beside the point. The bottom line is you lied to me, and I simply cannot trust those who lie. That's all there is to it. I... Ah! I'm... I'm sorry. Now please, think nothing of it. Oh, um... Am I intruding? Oh, no. Not at all. Did you need something? I accidentally left one of my textbooks in my desk, so I came back to fetch it. Ah, here it is. What subject? Take a look. Studying hard as always, I see. Except... wait... Intermediate? Isn't that part of the Sunday school curriculum? Seems a bit basic for you. Oh, <laughs> it's not for me. I promised to help Fee with her math studies. I found this at a bookshop in town and thought it might be of some use to her. Ah, okay. Which reminds me, I should really be going. I'm sure she's waiting for me by now. I'll see you later, Reen. Take care. And don't worry. Huh? I'm sure Machias doesn't hate you or anything. If you can find some way of making him realize how you feel, I'm sure he'll understand. It's just getting through to him that might be tough. Yeah. I just have to keep at it. If Emma believes I can make it work, and I'll believe it too. I should probably also get going. Maybe I'll wander around the academy grounds for a while before returning to the dorm.